Hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal and we are live on a Friday lunchtime, which means it's time for us to talk about coping <laughs> with feelings. Now, this was again uh, quite a week of feelings for me. <laughs> I can't believe what a mess I have behind me. Hang on a sec. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better now. <laughs> Hi there, Jeannie. And for all of you who are uh, in the Southern Hemisphere um, or far enough away anyway, may I wish you a very happy new year. For those of you who are uh, or here in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, <laughs> happy New Year's Eve. And I thought today I would talk a little bit about my feelings about uh, what happened to our weather this week. As you will remember, uh, back in the summer, we were hotter than Dubai in southern British Columbia, Canada. Canada people, you know, igloos. Yeah. Um, so we were hotter than Dubai for a couple of days. And <laughs> now <laughs> for, for the area in which I live, where if we get an inch of snow, we're upset. If we get two inches of snow, you know, that's sort of like a snow day. You know, we've had over a foot. Uh, and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the repercussions of that, what happened and how I dealt with it and my feelings about it, because this broadcast is all about our feelings. Hi, Jody. Thank you for getting here. For those of you who don't know, Jody is our admin and she went rushing off to go and do something this morning uh, just so she could be back in time for the broadcast. And whew, <laughs> you, you did it. I'm so proud of you. So I'm hoping that you've all had a wonderful Christmas. And if you have any feelings about that, you know, feel free to, to talk about them so that we can get them out in the open. Uh, I had I had a pretty good Christmas all in all, uh, I must admit. Uh, I, I felt cared for and loved. I went to my neighbors. We had a big family dinner. Um, and all was good. So my feelings about Christmas were really good. Sad. I had sad feelings because, um, you know, my my meeting with my friend Yvonne uh, and Wade had to be put off until the 15th. And I'd like some input on that. What would you do? It's our Christmas get together. And we've had to put it off all the way to the 15th of January so that we could all get together. And my question is, do I leave the tree up? and the decorations up because it is our Christmas get together. And I'm thinking maybe I will turn the outside lights off until that day and then I'll plug them back in again. Um, but what would you do? Would you leave your decorations up for a Christmas get together? Or would you just treat it like a normal day and, and get your, yeah. When are you gonna put your, Put down your decor, take down your decorations. Shall I put it that way? Uh, when is your plan? Are you a twelfth night person that you'll do it on January the fifth, or are you? Hello, I've already got mine gone. <laughs> type of person. Let me let me know. Um, all right. So the the big learning for me this week, without a doubt, and I don't know what your big learning was if you had one, but let me know. Hang on, let me see what Jody says. We keep our tree up until the end of January. Okay, so. Other than my neighbors who thought I was, you know, insane getting my lights up at the beginning of December when Benji came to visit, um, you know, so, hey, the worst that has happened, I'm paying extra for the hydro uh, electricity, as we call you call it in the States, we call it hydro here in Canada, um, because we have hydroelectricity. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's interesting that that you know you keep yours up that long that's unusual jody as you but and you are right Jeannie's saying arrived back at home one day after christmas and was clearing off my car windshield oh yeah i heard about that um Jeannie's saying that her hand slipped and her scraper hit her in the head um lots of blood everywhere Yeah, you know, you know, he, he, th there's no doubt about it that your head has the least protection, you know, <laughs> uh, from from things like that, right? Oh, you called a neighbor who took you to quick care. That's great. 
Uh, and did you put ice on it? I mean, did you what what did you do? Um, just so that if anybody else does it, that they will know what to do. Um, I can remember Yvonne's grandchild. Uh, he, you know, lived below me for many years, and uh, he fell and caught his head uh, on the corner of a coffee table. You know, you all know that story. Boy, did that bleed. It bled so badly that his daddy just about fainted when we were in the, uh, I took, I rushed them to critical care as well. And, um, you know, it was interesting because his daddy was so upset that he nearly fainted, um, you know, when, when I took him there at, to critical care. Oh, you got the liquid stuff instead of the stitches. Isn't it amazing that, that we've got that sort of super glue now that they can use? Yep, and she immediately put on ice. Yes, that's a really good thing. Uh, if you have, um, you know, a, a fast bleeding thing, if you've got, you know, can wrap a piece of ice in a clean cloth and stick it against there, it's a really good thing to help it um, reduce the amount of blood that's flowing. So great stuff, Jeannie. I'm sorry. How's the bruise? I'm certain you've got a really interesting looking bruise by now. And while I'm waiting for Jeannie to update me on that one, let me tell you, <laughs> what if you get this warning on your um, system, by the way, do, do all of you have uh, warning systems on your cell phones, you know, that if, if there's a bad weather coming in, that you're, you'll get a notification on your phone? I hope so, because that was the first thing I should have taken notice of. <laughs> um, the one I got... Um, I think it was Monday, said um, frostbite and hypothermia can occur within minutes if adequate precautions are not taken when outdoors. Uh, any activity exposes you to increased risk of frostbite. Now, I'm, you know, I'm in southern British Columbia, you know, it's just like the California of, of Canada. And I'm going, yeah, right. I mean, we never go you know, much below one or two degrees uh, below, which would be about, you know, 30, I think about 30 degrees Fahrenheit to us is, you know, deep chill. Um, well, I just have to tell you that that wasn't what happened this week. Um, we had <laughs> up to... <laughs> Uh, minus 20 centigrade, which I believe is about three or four um, Fahrenheit. That was our temperature. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm fairly, you know, at what temperature do you keep your house at in, in midwinter? That, that is a good question, right? So I keep mine, I keep the back of my house uh, at around 68 during the day, you know, 67, 68. And the front of the house, which is where I spend most of the day, uh, I have that up at a you know, little bit, a couple of degrees more, about 70. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, what do you think? What I didn't know and what I now know is that the difference of temperature in this place has a crawl space underneath it. The difference of temperature between, if I can say, waist height or counter height and floor height can be as much as 10 degrees. So I found out last night. Last night, um, I just tested it to see. And the, the temperature at counter height was about 74. Uh, but the temperature on my floor was 64. In, I'm talking Fahrenheit now because the majority of our viewers today are, are American. Um, right, so Jody's saying we keep our temperature at 65 and we bundle up. Exactly. Well, so I reckon that having the back of a house at 68 was, was perfectly okay. Wrong. I've learned that now. <laughs> Very wrong. Because... What happened was I got up on Tuesday morning uh, and I had, huh, I had 
or was it Monday morning? Maybe it was Monday morning. And I had no water in my bathroom at all, my master bathroom. Not in my faucet, not in my toilet, not in my shower. How would you feel, you know, if you woke up to that scenario? And by the way, <laughs> the first you realize is when you go to flush. <laughs> up until then, you don't realize you don't have water. Um, so I went to flush and it just went clunk. And I went, oh, no. And then I presumed there was something wrong with the toilet. So I took the toilet apart because uh, <laughs> I can. And then playing with the toilet told me, no, there was it wasn't the, there was just no water getting in. So that's when I went to the faucet and tried that and realized there was no water in the faucet. And then realized that there was water in the shower, but the only water I had was hot. So then <laughs> what did I know? That length of pipe, and in, in, I had no idea, I still don't actually, I have no idea what the configuration is of those pipes underneath my house. <clears throat> um, because until I know that, I, I, you know, I wouldn't really know how to defrost it. So here is my boiler, and I know the water comes into the house at the boiler. And the next room is my master bathroom with my shower here. It's a wall-to-wall -wall shower. Uh, my toilet here. And maybe the other way around. My toilet there, and then my vanity here. Okay. So the question is, does the pipe, okay, this is what I don't know. Does the pipe come from here past the shower to the toilet to the sink? Does that make sense? So does the pipe go like this, which is a possibility, or does the pipe go like this, and then there's a T, a T configuration that one goes off to the shower and one goes off to um, the wash hand basin, and I think it's the latter, but I could be wrong. Uh, I'm I, obviously when I can get under my. Um, when I can get under my place in the summer, I will have a look for that. All right, so that's what happened. And hi there to our friend from Salonika in Greece. Always pleasant to see you. Happy New Year to you. Uh, we haven't, we're just on New Year's Eve still here. And anyway, so that was the problem. So my question is, um, how many of you know how to deal with that? And how many of you, what would you feel? I. I strangely enough, my first reaction was, how stupid could I be? You know, I got a frostbite warning the night before. Um, and I didn't do anything about it. You know, it was just like, why did they give me a frostbite warning? They gave me one because the temperature was about to plummet. Right? It was about to nosedive. And they were warning me of that. Duh. So can you relate that the, the first feeling I had was how stupid could I be? Why hadn't I taken uh, adequate precautions? Question to you all. Um, how useful is that? <laughs> you know, is, is beating up on myself like that going to change anything in my bathroom? Ah, now Jody, who you know, who does, you know, who does amazing um, worry for everybody except herself, said, uh, "I was upset that I didn't warn you." Well, <laughs> feel free to take the blame if you want, Jody, but it's not your your concern. But I thank you for the thought and the love that I hear in that. But you know, it's just like seriously, can you imagine my feeling of, of you know? 
what I should have done. And you know, I always remember Terry Cole Whitaker saying, shooting all over yourself just doesn't help at all. And I've always remembered that. So as fast as I thought what I should have done, I just said, that's a total waste of time. <laughs> right? <laughs> what I should have done is a total waste of time. What can I do is where I, my mind needs to be. Do you all relate to that? There's absolutely no value except afterwards maybe going, okay, if you get the next frostbite warning, what are you going to do differently? You know, that that's a good thing to be doing afterwards. But the first thing is, what are you going to do right now? So I know a lot of you live in very cold areas and a lot of you know how to deal with this. Jody, it's amazing to me that you can have your house at 65 and all, you know, and I know it's an older house. Um, and that everything stays uh, unfrozen. Of course, the other thing was uh, that I'm pretty sure you're all going, Sal, did you at least have a tap dripping somewhere? No, of course not. It never gets that cold here. Normally. <laughs> Normally, it did. Um, and so I didn't do any of the things that you would think of. So now I was in this stage where, and, you know, I was sort of problem solving for myself. Once I identified, okay, the southern end of my house is frozen. The question was, what about the boiler, uh, the hot water heater? Is, is water getting to that? And I worked out that I was pretty sure that that water was getting in because I had water, um, cold water in my kitchen behind me here. I had cold water in this faucet and the cold water had to come from the boiler area. Am I making sense? And so that boiler area is sort of three quarters of the way down my house. So I was pretty sure water was getting to my boiler, which was very important. And I don't know this, but our boilers automatically got a, so do they have a fail safe on them? So if if fresh water is not getting to them, that they cut off. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm pretty certain that they have a, what I call a fail safe so that they, you know, if you use the water in the tank and there's no water coming in, that it will stop uh, heating the water in there. That's my feeling. If anybody knows for sure, let me know. Uh, it would make an awful lot of sense to me that they are built that way. So, <laughs> so now I've got the problem and um, I've had the feelings and discounted the feelings and saying, well, you know, that's not going to help you at all, is it? <laughs> so let's move on from there. Uh, now, the other thing was, was I going to crawl under the house? We've already had a lot of snow. Was I going to dig the, my way into the crawl space, which is, goes from the outside? Um, was I going to dig my way uh to be able to open up the crawl space and then climb underneath. No, <laughs> I have to tell you, I am a little bit past that in my uh, age. So uh, what I have to tell you was that I thought, okay, what can I do without doing that? Now, obviously, everybody that I spoke to locally said, oh, uh, haven't you got your pipes, you know, clad in that stuff to protect them? Uh, well, apparently not. Um, how did I know that? <laughs> they froze. Um, and then other people said, you know, don't you have a heat strip on them? And I went, obviously not. <laughs> you know, it's, ama it's amazing to me how many people, um, you know, ask you questions that are, are pretty obvious in, in the negative. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I had a heat strip, would it have frozen? No. If I had, um, you know, that foam cladding around those pipes, would they have frozen? No. So obviously I didn't have them. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so ah, for the next 48 hours, I was in fix-it mode. And... My question to you all is, with all your experience of cold, and I know I've got a lot of people who uh, have a lot of experience with cold, what would you do in that circumstance? So what I did 
was I spoke to everybody I knew uh, that lived in a cold climate or had lived in colder climates than the one that we have here in southern British Columbia. You know, being at minus 20 was so unusual for this part of, uh, of Canada that, you know, it was just like talking to people who lived here, they were all probably going to have about as much knowledge as I did. Whereas people who live further north and in much colder areas of, of Canada, um, they would have you know, more input for me. So again, I got a lot of these comments about, you know, well, didn't you do this? Didn't you do that? No, obviously I didn't. And I don't know about you. I started to feel quite frustrated that they asked me these questions because, duh, <laughs> if I had, I wouldn't be calling you right now. Um, <laughs> So the the option was uh, to go under the house and, you know, insulate everything, uh, which I didn't want to do because Mickey and Minnie and the rest of their children, I think, have been living under my house for a while. Um, so I, what I decided to do, and also getting to it was difficult, and with my back, I didn't want to be crawling in a crawl space. Uh, what I decided to do was plan B or C, or D, or E, whatever else I could come up with. And one of the things that came up was to, I had already thought, I need to increase the temperature in my bathroom. Yes, Jeannie. Um, your Jeannie saying, fill the bathtub with water and let the tap drip. But you see, the thing was that I already have that in my guest bathroom. Uh, I couldn't let a tap drip. Um, you know, the only tap I could drip was in the guest bathroom. And, you know, that's quite a way away from my master bathroom. So what I needed was more heat in the southern part of my house. And that was my thinking. And I was thinking to myself, what a pity. You know, I know that my heating vents go under the house. Um, but, you know, what I was thinking, you know, what a pity there isn't a sort of a piece of string I can pull every now and then uh, at the end of that run and just let the hot air go into the crawl space. <laughs> you know, that with my thinking, it's just like, wouldn't that be great just to be able to go clunk, leave it up for half an hour and then just drop it down again. <laughs> I might still work on that plan. Anyway, um, so then what I did was I on, on Monday night, I put a space heater into my bathroom and brought the temperature up to 80 in my guest bathroom because I thought that's where all the pipes are. So that's the room that needs to be uh, a lot hotter. Well, that didn't work. I still woke up on the next morning, Tuesday morning with frozen everything. Oh, by the way, round about two o'clock in the afternoon, my toilet in the master ba uh, bathroom did start filling up again. So that was good. Um, but, and then I thought, well, now I've got one thing working in the master bathroom. Maybe I need to set the toilet so that it keeps running. You know, everybody's saying, let a tap drip. Yeah. So now I've got one thing that has loosened up, and that is the toilet, uh, which made me think that maybe that water line does come to a T-junction and then go either way. I'll be interested to see in the summer whether I'm right in that assessment because the toilet freed up first, and that's the main line. So what I did was I thought about it, and um, Okay, I'm just getting a bit distracted here. Um, Niasha, happy birthday to you for tomorrow. Let me get that out of the way. Yeah, if you could imagine, Niasha, it, uh, you, you work in centigrade there, right? Not, not Fahrenheit. Um. <laughs> uh, did you imagine this is minus 20 centigrade here at the moment? 
or has been. It's actually warmed up to balmy freezing at the moment or minus two or five, somewhere in there. But, you know, it's not. Uh... Oh, you don't know. OK, well, it's it's way cold. Um, anyway, so the the other thing is I by by the time I woke up the second morning and everything was still frozen, I then decided, OK, that the obvious thing that I need to do is to warm up the crawl space. And one of the things that my neighbors who lived in the north said to me was, you know, one of my neighbors lost all the water. You know, I was very lucky to only lose a bit. But one of my neighbors lost all their water uh, because they were frozen. And what I decided was I didn't want to put a heater under my crawl space or into my crawl space because to me that's uh, maybe another fire waiting to happen because you can't see what's going on down there. And so what I decided was, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the temperature in the house. Now, that's why I asked what temperature you normally have your house at. And mine is, as I said, around about 68 to 70, depending on which part of the house you're in. I pushed it up to 75, and that still didn't do it. That was interesting to me. Uh, I guess it was so cold in that crawl space. And then I pushed it up to 80. 80 did it. <laughs> 80, what is that in, in um, Canadian? Hang on a second. Let me find that out. Uh, bear with me a second while I work that out. Twenty what? Twenty oh yeah, about twenty-seven degrees uh, Celsius. So, what what I realized was that's how hot I needed the house to be to clear the line. But here's the good news: I left it at eighty, <laughs> walked around <laughs> like it was Hawaii. Um, I I I did that and then I realized now that it has cleared now I can go back to the obvious things that you're all talking about you know I can have a tap dripping at night in the master bathroom by the way uh, the advice I got from somebody who'd lived in very cold temperatures was don't let it drip let it run and not you know obviously not full but let it he said let it run so that it's like a um, pencil lid uh, but don't have it dripping. You're going to need to have it running at this temperature. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I didn't know that. I always thought you just needed to have one dripping. But he said at those sort of temperatures, you need to have like a constant stream running. And I did that. And sure enough, uh, the next morning, I still had water in my faucet. Yay! <laughs> So then, of course, being me, I thought, OK, now we've got everything running. Does the house still need to be at 80? And so what I did was I pulled the temperature back uh, to about 675 inside the house. Still, still, you know, <laughs> very warm weather. Um, but, you know, inside. <laughs> but I wanted to know if I have the temperature at that level, will it do enough? And I still had the tap running but i didn't that's my next question when do you think is the coldest time of the night because this surprised me um and i'm not sure whether it, it is normal and i'm gonna need to watch on that but what surprised me was when the coldest time was the coldest time was not two or three o'clock in the morning as i would have thought the t coldest time was round about seven or eight o'clock in the morning. Do, do any of you have any comment about that? Are you surprised? I was. So owing to the fact I get up a few times during the night, um, I decided I would you know, do an experiment and actually not start that tap running until sort of I woke up, which I normally do around three, and I would just you know save a bit of water and start it running at that time. 
and that also has worked. So I'm <laughs> very, very happy. Um, the good news is <laughs> that I had warmth and I had food. And by the way, the very best news was that I had um, Betty Ann's son-in-law visiting next door. And every time he cleared their driveway, he also cleared mine. Talk about a snow elf. <laughs> I could not be more happy um, than, than to have um, him come and do that for me. I was just so grateful. And I just want to say that it is <laughs> a gift that keeps on giving. Because every morning I wake up and I go, he's been again. <laughs> and he does it before I wake up. Um, so isn't it wonderful to have neighbors like that? And I actually wrote yesterday, <laughs> I actually wrote to Betty Ann yesterday and said, can we keep him <laughs> for the winter? <laughs> and she said, no way, he eats too much. Um, <laughs> but, you know, how kind of him, you know, what, what a really nice thing to do. And so basically... Uh, I've got a picture for you because I, you know, I thought you needed to see this. Remember that one or two inches for us is a lot. Hold on. And let me just show you. I've got a picture. We have, this is the amount of snow on the hedge and the hedge goes to about here. So it's about a foot of snow that we've had. And this is like, when do we ever get a foot of snow? <laughs> occasionally apparently so I spent a lot of time do can you imagine that I had time feeling some amount of fear all right uh, so if that happened to you would you have had any fear and if so what fear the one question I had that I couldn't answer was if that southern end of a house is frozen solid, uh, but by two o'clock in the afternoon, the toilet starts to, to loosen up, it thaws, uh, does that mean that the end pipes are fairly safe as they are? In other words, they are frozen, but they get relief because during the day, the water is running um, you know, through that main pipe. And that was what I didn't know. Or was I likely to have a burst pipe now because the ends were frozen? Well, touching wood, uh, apparently that isn't the case. And um, I, for that, I'm very, very grateful. But I had a lot of fear about that. And then the next question is, do I know how to turn off the mains to my water supply and do I just wondered whether you all know where to find that where, where is the shut off inside your home for water so if a pipe bursts um you know internally that you can cut it off yeah J Jody's saying I would have tremendous fear not knowing exactly what to do yes and that's why I wanted to talk about it because knowledge is a wonderful thing, right? And experience is a, it is a wonderful thing. So uh, the, the thing was that I didn't know until now, you know, that I had that problem in the southern end of my house. The other thing I thought about was um, how can I insulate that southern wall from the outside? Does that make any sense? In other words, I now know that that pipeline runs across that southern wall, obviously touches it at some point, and that's why it's freezing. So then I thought, well, now it makes sense to try and have a, some sort of insulation against that wall. So what I did was I went out and I put some cardboard against that wall and then um, loaded up some tarps against it to hold them in place. Uh, so that hopefully will help a bit. And by the way, I got a lot of cardboard. <laughs> I do a lot of Amazon shopping. So cardboard is something I have lots of. Uh, so that was, you know, that was happy. I also thought 
uh, I would get some of my leaves that I had collected uh, during the year um, and put those against the wall. But what I discovered was it was so cold that the plastic bags in which I have the leaves have started to disintegrate, so I couldn't lift up the bags. However, what I will know for next year is to um, take my leaves and put the bags against that wall over the winter. And that will help me protect that wall. Yeah, so <laughs> I was pretty happy, actually, by the time I'd finished it all. But I was so grateful. I have to tell you that I had a feeling of great joy and gratefulness for the fact that three quarters of my house was absolutely fine. Grateful that I had a good heating system that could take the heat up to 80 without any problem at all. Grateful. How many of you going, boy, how much did that cost you, right, to run the heat that hot for so for a couple of days? Um, funny enough, I was also grateful that I accidentally totally overpaid my, my um, gas for my furnace uh, after the fire. I paid this big amount that was due, and then so did the insurance people. So I ended up double paying it, which meant that I've got about a $300 credit in my heating bill. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So I didn't have to worry about that either. You know, that, that the money was there already to pay for that extra heat, you know, heat. So can you see I had a lot to be grateful for? after I had got out of the fear. And I kept concentrating on that. You know, I still had internet. I still had water through three quarters of the house, you know, everything. Yes, Jeannie's saying she was grateful for a terrific neighbor, you know, that helped her. Um, and also grateful that the scraper didn't do more harm. Yes, and as you said, Jeannie, that it missed your eyes, all right? Um. I get. was it a plastic scraper? I've never heard of a plastic scraper doing that much damage. That's what amazes me. Now, I saw, funny enough, Jeannie, I saw something on the internet, and I haven't tried it, and I don't know about it, but they were saying that if you take a thick plastic bag, you know, a good quality one, yeah. Uh, what I call a freezer bag, you know, they're thicker, and put um, sort of warm water in it, lukewarm water, uh, and then use that bag to to across your windshield. Um, that that will do save you a lot of scraping. Have you ever tried that? I I haven't tried it, but I thought that was an interesting thing. Uh, obviously not hot because you don't want hot against freezing cold, but it's just like that the plastic bag, the, the, the sort of warm water inside will just gently melt the ice uh, on your windshield. Um, how many of you cover your side view mirrors with plastic bags during, during the winter if you live in a high snow area? Apparently, that really helps, you know, that you won't sort of wake up to trying to scrape the snow and ice off your side mirrors. So just put, um, you know, a, a plastic bag over them and, and do it up, right, so it doesn't blow off. But I thought that was a really good idea. Um, I, I haven't heard it. I haven't tried it either, Jody, but I thought it made some sense. Uh, and so I'm definitely, luckily, my car is in a carport. And I did have a lot of snow on it one day, um, even in the carport. My deck, which is covered, uh, had snow all over it. The wind was pushing, you know, that, that snow onto my deck from both north and south. That, that must have been some sort of vortex going on because I had it coming in, um, either with the wind so strong that it pushed snow 29 feet along my deck or that it was blowing sometime from the south and sometime from the north. 
uh, but you know, to have snow actually on my deck was interesting. <laughs> I want to start with some quotes about New Year. How about this one? New Year stands before us like a chapter in a book waiting to be written. You know, we just turned the page on 2022. So, or we will be for some of us. Some of you have already done it, but for some of us, we will be doing it in a few hours. So my question is, what are you glad? What do you, what do you feel glad to be turning the page on in 2021? I have to tell you that I am just so glad to be alive. I mean, you know, it's not like I want to be negative about anything. It's just like with all that happened in 2021, you know, did we ever believe that the pandemic would last this long? I don't think so. But think, think what we have learned. Um, you know, what about survival and about... Um, keeping ourselves safe and about hygiene. You know, have we learned a lot? And uh, I just bought myself some more masks. Hang on a second. Let me just talk to that. Uh, the reason I just wanted to get one out was because I don't know what these are. These are... Ah, they are different. Okay, so these are the KF94s, all right? I presume, yep, that must be that one. So this is, so that's, you know, no way of tightening them up. I, I've got the 95s, you know, that have got the um, filter in them as well. But these are very useful and very small, you know, in, in terms they haven't got the filter thing. So very nice to be carrying in my purse all the time, some extra ones in case I, for some reason, lose my 95s. Um, but I was thinking, you know, how many of us have become quite expert about face masks in our time? Jeannie's saying, so glad to be home. Yes, we, you know, Jeannie and I both returned to our homes this year um, after fires, all right? And so I'm glad to have had two vaccines and a booster. Uh, so glad to have some, the electrical problem solved. Yes, you know, I had to, I had to cancel my booster for the second time um, because it happened on the heavy snow day. And there was, you know, I actually checked with Yvonne because Yvonne is always my guiding light about the weather uh, because she goes to work. And when I contacted her and said, what's it like out there to drive? And she knows I've got the Jeep. And she said to me, uh, don't even bother. You know, stay inside. Cancel and rebook your booster. Don't be out in this unless you absolutely have to. And her point was that I very rarely leave the house. So although we all are likely to get infected with the uh, Omicron, um, you know, my chances of getting it are probably a lot less than the average person who spends a lot of time in public. And I don't. So that's a good one. Uh, so that's a good thing. Yes. For all of you who've had two vaccines and a booster, be prepared that we probably will need a, another booster in a few months. All right. Uh, they're saying... What did I read? Somewhere they're already on the having the fourth vaccine shot. Where did I read that? Somewhere in Europe. Um, not France, but Italy, I think. Um, somewhere like that. Um, or maybe Israel, where they're already giving the fourth shot. Not the third, but the fourth. So be prepared for that. So here we go. We close the book on 2022 and open the one on 2000. Uh, sorry, close the book on 21 and, and start on 2022. So my question to you is, what is it you are looking forward to uh, in 2022? What is it that you have planned? 
Uh, Jane is asking, do I have any special plans for tonight? Does anybody have special plans tonight, right? Um, Jane is saying she and York, her husband, will be at home watching TV. Actually, I'm going across to the neighbors, uh, you know, that little pod that I have that we call our safe zone. We're all getting together. We're going to have um, a big spaghetti meal, <laughs> which sounds like such fun, as long as she's burnt the corners. I don't know about you, but there's something about those burnt corners that I really love. And then I, um, we will then be playing uh, probably Pictionary and then bowling, you know, on, on the Wii. So we're going to have a busy time of it. All right. So Niasha is saying, but Mama Sal, are all these vaccines safe? I mean, getting third and fourth doses. Um, for me... Uh, because I am old, and for Jody, because she is immune immune compromised, um, that's a no brainer. Niasha, the the getting COVID would be far more dangerous than having the vaccines. So I I can't tell you whether all these vaccines are safe or not. Quite honestly. All right. I can't tell you that because none of us really know. Uh, five years from now, ask me that question and then we'll be have a better idea. But what I do know is it's my best chance of not getting it. And that to me is important. So I will keep having whatever boosters they put out. Jody's saying in 2022, she's looking forward to a year of improving her health. Good. I'm pleased to hear that. And you're, you're good at that. You know what to do. I must admit that to my horror, I did stand on a scale and I should not have done that. <laughs> that, that was pretty depressing for me. I did put on quite a bit of weight. Um, and that's probably because I was busy playing with stuff. Hang on. You may, I bought all this stuff to make um, treats for Christmas and I never made them. And so last night I was playing with a couple. And this was shortbread that I made. Shortbread that I made with 50% um, regular flour and 50% almond flour. Um, and 50% regular sugar and 50% stevia. Uh, and I don't know about you, but there's no way that you can make these without taste testing them, right? Uh, they taste like they need a little bit more flour. They're very buttery, I can tell you that. Uh, oh, there we go. And then... <laughs> And then these I made from Belgian chocolate and marshmallow, so it's fudge. Mm. A bit harder than I would like, but tasty. Mm. They were fine last night, but being in the fridge, they've hardened up, so I'd like those to get to room temperature before I try eating them again. I don't want to lose teeth, but these are fine. All right, so Jeannie Slim, I've heard of people suffering from COVID who have not gotten any of the vaccines. Yeah, the majority of people who've got COVID now are unvaccinated. Unfortunately, that includes a lot of children. All right, Niasha saying, But she is skeptical, but my, her parents tell me it's the safest thing. They're the ones who encourage me. Well, I want to tell you something. I would say, and, 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 and the science has shown, Niasha, that your best protection against it is to get vaccinated, fully vaccinated. 
if you've got two vaccines, you're pretty good. The third one, improves your chance even more. Because after about six months of that second one, you're going to need the booster. They will keep improving them, um, Nyasha. And when I say improving them, but as the variants come out, they will keep including the variants into the boosters so that we'll get more and more protection against those. The thing that none of us know, to be honest, is what effect will they have on our immune system and so forth? Jody, who already has a compromised immune system, no brainer. She has to have them. She has to do whatever she can to protect herself from that. Also, Jody lives in New Hampshire, which Jody, if I'm correct, is one of the epicenters at the moment of Omicron. Now, the good news is, Niasha, and I'm certain you've probably researched this, but Omicron is not as much of a killer, if you're vaccinated, it's not so much of a killer. Um, you know, you'll just get a, a bad flu. <coughs> now, Jeannie's saying she also got her regular flu shot in September. I didn't. Um, but I definitely got my um, pa pandemic ones. Here we go. So here's my next uh, quote. We will open the book. Its pages are blank. We're going to put words on them ourselves. The book is called Opportunity. And its first chapter is New Year's Day. So what opportunity will you open up for yourself this year, this coming year? What do you want to learn? Um, do, what do you want to do better? Let's let's think about that. What do you what do you want to improve? Hi, Emma. Happy New Year to you. I know you've already. <laughs> you must be just about there. Uh, Jody's saying New Hampshire has one of the highest rates of new cases in the nation. That's what I was hearing. So, you know, it must be very scary for you and for Lionel, um, you know, that you have this going on. And here's another thing. We, I, we had a note from Beth uh, on one of the side groups that we have. And Beth was saying that she has an issue that obviously she needs to get to a doctor to check out, but she can't get into a doctor for two weeks. Why? Everybody's so busy dealing with um, the Omicron at the moment. So, you know, this is where the downside is. So Niesh is saying, okay, good, because I'm so terrified that I can't really understand. It's why the vaccines aren't totally protecting us, but I guess it take a few more years to get it right. No, and that isn't the reason. All right, let me try and show you this. I'm not a doctor, as you know, uh, Niasha, but we started off with just the COVID-19, okay? We started off with that. So what they did, Niasha, was they came up with the first vaccine, number one, let's call it number one, to protect us from that. Does that make sense? But then what happened, this COVID created a new problem, and that was called Delta. So this was now a new problem, right? So the vaccine for this was made to protect the initial COVID. Does that make sense to you, Niasha? But then Delta came along. And so that's why we needed number two, all right? And now we've got Omicron, which is why we need number three. All right. And as these variants of the original, they all sort of come off this original problem that we had. And that's, it's not that they haven't got it right. It's just each time 
you know, the mutation, that's the word of it, you know, like the main virus has an offshoot and now we need to deal with this offshoot. How do we protect against that? And then this offshoot can have an offshoot. And so until we've got this whole thing settled down, we will keep needing uh, to have these shots. Does that make sense to you, Nasha? The other thing is that they, obviously, we have to find out how long do those shots protect us for. And that is another thing, you know, that so that the, after six months, they're saying top it up. Because they didn't want to overprotect us at the beginning, you know, and cause more illness or more reaction. Um, so, you know, it's, we're going to need to play this game for a while until we've got it under control. Yes, Nash is saying, so they're developing vaccines to meet the requirements of the viruses. I thought it was one overall fix. No, no, no. It's like virus number one had an offshoot. So now we need a second vaccine for the offshoot, had an offshoot here. So we need a third one. And um, okay, good. I'm glad you can see that. So uh, I understand what you're saying. Why didn't they just make one to cover them all? Well, we didn't have two, three, and four. All right. <laughs> when we started, we just had the one. So they made that vaccine. Then we had an offshoot. So now we've got two of them. So they made a vaccine for here. So no, don't worry. You see, Niasha, don't apologize for not understanding. I always give you credit for asking the questions that a lot of people don't, all right? And a lot of people will read a lot of misinformation about this and, you know, think that, you know, I, I've heard things like, uh, how many of you heard this one, all right, that, that, that the government has put trackers in the vaccines you know, I mean, the most terrible things. That's not true, by the way. Um, they're just most terrible things that are going out about these things. All right. So Emma is saying um, vaccines create memory cells within our immune system so that when our immune system comes into contact with the virus, our immune system remembers it and that it is a threat and destroys it. That's nicely put. I like that. So Emma's saying the new viruses require new memory cells. So they that that's a nice picture. Yeah, Jeannie's saying asking questions allows for understanding. Yay, Niasha. Yes, I think it helps everybody understand, all right? Yeah, and Emma's saying our bodies are amazing, even dysfunctional ones. You know, I was listening to uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta this morning, and he was talking about the three things that be really good for us to concentrate on in 2022. And you know that he is obviously a doctor. He's a neurosurgeon. But what he was saying, number one, of course, movement. Uh, let's make sure we move more in, in 2022. And that doesn't mean exercise that means you could be dancing you could be doing you know anything that is movement uh, i don't know about the rest of you but i am lucky enough to have a fitness tracker and i do try to have a minimum amount of steps i've been pretty bad in the last couple of days because of the snow but you know the truth is i can't blame the snow for the lack of steps because i have a glider air glider that I could get on and put in the extra steps and I have a Wii machine. I haven't done it. So I need some support on that. I need to get back to doing those. Um, the second thing he said was our nutrition. All right. What our body will react to what we eat. All right. So we are as healthy as the food that we eat. Now, Jody came up with you know, Jody's illness and her post-op, pre-op uh, diet, you know, before she had that um, gastric bypass thing done. She was saying she learned a lot about uh, what to do to lose weight doing that. And she's already lost 60 pounds, by the way, 
uh, with that gastric bypass. But what she said was, you know, before she went in for the operation, she went on an almost liquid diet and survived really well. So what Jody is saying is to get rid of her Christmas eating um, and, and also to jumpstart her 2002 weight loss, she is going back on to liquid diet all day and then one meal in the evening. And, you know, I must admit that <laughs> if I, we're not consuming sugar, um, th that I do that pretty well as well. I try now to have mostly, uh, I will have, Oat, oats, but I I have my oats, my first meal of oats is um, blended, all right, so I drink my oats. And then I also now am having a, what I call an orange juice drink. I do orange and carrot juice and I um, blend them up and strain the juices. And I drink the juices quite often hot, you know, I warm it up and drink it like a tea. Uh, but I put uh, allspice in there to make it tasty. But, you know, those spices are good for you as well. So, and then obviously I have my coffee. <laughs> you know that. Uh, so I can get pretty well into the evening before I really feel like having something to eat. Unless I go to the fridge and find this lot. Um, so, you know, that's what he was saying. Uh, very important. Yeah, I agree with Emma. Emma's saying uh, to Niasha, to say sorry after asking questions uh, makes me sad because maybe somebody has hushed you in the past, Niasha. You can ask here. We all do, all right? If she's saying I do, but don't you agree? We all ask questions here because it's safe to ask questions here. Um, and if we don't know the answers, we've got a team of people who will work really hard to find the answers. And I think that is so important. And I agree with you, Emma, you know, to have to apologize for asking a question. I don't believe there are any stupid questions either. You know, they're questions that you need to ask. Um, and, you know, I had that time and time again when I was on stage where I'd be doing something and somebody from the audience would say, this might be a stupid question, but, and I'd go, there is no such thing as a stupid question. What is the question you need to ask, regardless of what anybody else in the room thinks? What is your question? You know, and then I would answer it. You know, the other thing I found was I would be talking to an audience member and somebody over there would answer for them. You know, I can't tell you how many times that happened. And I'd stay looking at the person that I'd asked the question to. And I go, I didn't realize you were a ventriloquist because I just asked you a question and you managed to throw your voice into a male voice because it was a woman I was talking to right over there. How did you do that? <laughs> you know? um, and then I would look at the person who answered and I said, my question was not to you. The answer that you have may not be the same answer that the person I'm asking has. And I always use that example. If I asked you to tell me a breed of dog, you know, what breed of dog would you give me? And, you know, if you're talking to a, a group of people, nearly everybody has a different dog that they mention. You know, and that's the whole thing. When you're asking one person a question, it's not for somebody else to answer it. Sharon, Happy New Year to you as well. And thank you for looking after your parents. Um, that is so good. You are a good human. We know that. And how about this one? Cheers to the new year and another chance to get it right. So what do you want to give some more practice to this year? All right. What is it that you would like to practice a bit more this year? Knowing that you might still not get it right, but you'd like to get it better. You know, I was thinking, 
Oh, it's Dendra. I was thinking that this year, in fact, in a couple of weeks, I will celebrate 10 years of not smoking. But it took me <laughs> 66 years, no, 56 years to get it right. You know, when you think about that, it took me a lifetime to get the combination right so that I could quit smoking. You know, my mind right, my 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 stress management right, my guilt right, my, you know, all those things. It took me a lifetime to get it right. And, you know, when I look at it, it's amazing to think that that is 10 years. All right, so... Jody is saying, I'm practicing living in the moment and not, not letting fear lead me. Yes, for any of us who have health issues, you know, it is really important that we live the best life that we can. Um, I heard somebody uh, quite, uh, about 10 years older than I am, not quite, but um, say to me this week, you know, when I think about how I used to live and the things I used to do and the fun I used to have, my life is really narrow now. <laughs> and I wrote back and said, hey, if I thought about that, I'd be depressed. Do you get my feeling on this one? Which is most people, with, as they get older, they realize that their life has, you know, life as they know it has shrunk. Why their bodies are not as strong, you know, they, they don't have the you know, same, we don't go out and party every week and do all those sort of things. So, um, you know, if I concentrated on those things, I would depress myself. Why would I do that? I try to get up every day and be grateful for the fact I woke up. That's a good start. Um, I try to make sure that every day I, I learn something. Yeah, I spend a bit of time learning something. I spend a bit of time playing because, <laughs> you know, that's fun. Um, you know, I try and spend a bit of time laughing either with my friends online or, you know, um, I will watch something that makes me laugh. So, you know, it's up to us to make our life balance. But boy, if you concentrate on the past, you are going to be depressed. All right? Or as Jody says, if you are constantly going, um, well, you know, I, I've got this illness and this illness and this illness. You know, if you if you spend every day, all day, every day thinking about that, you are going to make yourself even more sick than you already are. Whereas if you go, none of us know if we're going to be alive this time next year. None of us know if we're going to be alive this time next week. So for goodness sake, people. Let's enjoy while we ha you have it. Do you know what I mean? Let's use it while we've got it. You know, whatever muscles you've got working for you. I'm thinking about somebody like Erin, you know. Um, and, you know, by the way, I did check in with Erin this week and she seems to be okay. I think she's moving again, if I understood that correctly. Um, but, you know, it's just like be grateful for what you've got. And if you think you're in a bad place, imagine, you know, Erin, uh, who has use of literally, I think, about one hand, uh, you know, and luckily she has use of a hand so she can type uh, on a cell phone or something, um, and, and her mind. But, you know, the, basically the rest, a lot of her body has let her down. And so you look at it, Jody, for example, who can't stand up for more than a very short amount of time, but she can stand a little bit and has worked so hard at strengthening those muscles so that she can stand longer. Um, I'm, you know, I'm always very aware of that, Jody. how hard you work to keep those muscles from atrophying. And I will remind you that two years ago, when I first came here, um, I could hardly walk up the stairs to my house because of arthritis in my left hip. And today, you know, I can tell you, I can stand on that left leg uh, and hip. Uh, I'm, I've lifted my right one at the moment. 
hang on, let me show you that I can do that. Um, but you know, I can do that. That's how much strength I've built and I have no pain. And if you remember, I was doing exercises like this, which I couldn't do. I could only get it moving about this far, but now look at this. All right. And why? Because I use the muscles and I stop the arthritis from getting worse. And I stopped protecting that side. I started to use that side. Yeah, Jody's saying, I'm practicing living in the moment and not letting fear lead me is what it's all about. And Yasha's saying, for her, she listens to affirmations. I think um, any of you would benefit from listening to affirmations or at least having them in certain places. For example, my, <laughs> you know, when I went, Oh, short word, the whole house, back of the house is frozen. Uh, and then said to myself, what an idiot. I went, wait, no, you're not an idiot. You just didn't react when you got that news. Why? You'd never had that frostbite warning before. You didn't know what it meant in terms of the effect it could have on your house. Now you know. You are a wiser person today. You know, and so I make sure that whenever I beat up on myself, I give myself um, some good news on top of it. Jody's saying of me, she's saying, Sal, you've worked hard to improve your strength and mobility with the arthritis. Yes. And, you know, Jody, I noticed that um, this finger is really has a, a problem growing. Uh, my my in you know, my right hand index finger this uh, joint here is definitely having a problem. So I need to do a lot of work on that one if I want to keep using it. And it hurts. You know, I don't mind telling you, it hurts. And there are times when I'm thinking, you know, that is the joint that I lift my coffee with. Now, obviously, I have plan B ready. <laughs> you, know, you know, lifting it with two fingers is um, plan B. But I realized that that's you know, going to be an issue. And so um, I need to do what I can to keep that joint working. And I did buy the splints, Jody. <laughs> but I have no idea when to wear them. <laughs> I'm sure you'll tell me. Okay. How about this? Enter this new year with a gratitude for this new chance to create your dreams. I would say to all of us, let us make sure that we start the year grateful and that we made it to another year. Uh, grateful that we are as well as we are. We could be a lot worse. Grateful um, to have food on the table I was thinking when that when that frostbite thing came down and, and it got to so cold, so grateful not to be homeless. <gasps> Betty White has passed weeks from her hundredth birthday. I am so sorry to hear that. And she worked her whole life. She never retired. Thank you for letting us know. Uh, Emma, I, you know, I am certain that heaven will be a funnier place starting today. Okay, so Niasha's saying, growing up, she had a lot of those self-deteriorating words. I'm finally working on getting them out of my mind and listening to positive affirmations. Good. I want to tell you, that's how I got out of depression. Uh, was to remind myself that I was not nearly as stupid as the voices in my head were telling me that I was. Jody's saying about the splints that I've got, wear them as much as you can, really. Increase the time gradually as you get accustomed to the feeling. Wow. So the other thing I'd like to tell you, this is a nice quote. It says, Celebrate endings, all right? So if any of you have had an ending during 2021, 
learn to celebrate them because with them come new beginnings. And it's difficult, right? You've, you've lost somebody you love or something that you love or, you know, your way of life or whatever. Don't dwell in the past, all right? Let's talk about the future, right? What do you want to do? Jody is a great one for, you know, telling us that, you know, use what you can while you can. All right. So if your eyes are failing, do all the things you want to do with your eyes now. You know, don't get to where they have failed and you're going, I wish I had spent more time. Uh, I found that, um, you know, spending time doing creative stuff that requires a lot of concentration and a lot of uh, uh, you know, concentration with my eyes uh, really has helped me. So I look at it and go, don't be sad. Um, do the best you can. You know, I, I, I've always throughout my life, and I, people have said to me that, that it's a, a negative thing, but I don't see it like that. I have constantly asked myself questions like, if I lost my sight tomorrow, how would I continue doing Dear Mama Sa? Or if I lost my voice tomorrow, how would I continue doing Dear Mama Sa? You know, I ask questions like that. If I lost the use of my hands, how would I still use the internet? You know, it's just like, you know, to me, uh, it, it's like I want to be prepared that any of these things could happen. If I, you know, if I lost the use of my legs, if I lost my hearing, well, that's happening. Um, what if I totally lost my hearing? How would I entertain myself? And quite honestly, I've always lived my life being ready for that rather than being shocked by it when it happens. Each year's regret are envelopes in which messages of hope are found for the new year. How about that? <laughs> Each year's regret are envelopes in which messages of hope are found for the new year. All right, so Nias is saying, I cannot see myself at age 40 and be angry. Tomorrow I'll be 37, and I'll keep saying to myself that I'm sad because my parents abused me previously for some things that were beyond my control. Hanging on to that is not going to make you a happy person. Blaming them, angry at them, all those things are not going to make you a happy person. The, the really sad thing about that, Niasha, is I agree with you. It should never have happened, but it did. Um, so aren't you glad that you found out? Aren't you glad that you did then you know, research and, and had the ability with the Internet to be able to find out that you, know, you could have a, a much happier life uh, if you worked on yourself? And so I look at it and go, I am so grateful that you've done the work and that you continue to do it and that you continue to find ways to feel better about yourself, regardless of your situation. And it is, you know, your illness was beyond your control. It wasn't because you were stupid or slow or whatever. It was an illness beyond your control, as is Erin's situation. You know, Erin, you know, it's beyond her control. Jody's situation is beyond her control. I look at it all and go, you know, you are an absolute um, inspiration to a lot of us. So keep up the good work. How about this? Take a leap of faith and begin this wondrous new year by believing. You know, I keep thinking that we are so lucky to live in this day and age where the learning in medicine is doubling, I think, by the year. I believe I saw that. In other words, you know, for every year that passes, our medical knowledge doubles. And that's pretty amazing, isn't it? That, you know, things that we can, you know, cope with today and treat today, things that, you know, if you think about it, um, 
20, 40, 40 years ago, uh, HIV was a death sentence. Um, you know, uh, how about the, 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 there's so many things that, you know, we have managed to learn how to uh, help, uh, that we need to be grateful that we live in this day and age. Imagine that, that, you know, we got to give credit to the fact that, you know, we got a pandemic and within months, literally less than a year, we got the vaccine for it, something that normally would take 12 years. And that, I think, is testament to the science that we have today. All right. And. I think it is really um, important. I'm reading something Emma's saying here. Emma's saying talking to that little girl has been a big game changer for me. Keep doing that. It makes sense to talk to our inner child when the trauma stems from our childhood. I agree with you 100%, Em. I, I often listen to my inner child being fearful or telling me I was stupid. I was stupid not to, to, to do something to warm up my house. And I went, no, I wasn't stupid. I didn't have experience of that. Now I do. And so now, um, you know, I, I thought I was warm enough. I, I didn't know that my, my pipes weren't properly protected. Now I do. So now I can make another plan. So it's really important that we do talk to that inner child that, that feels the fear and feels the shame and guilt and all those things. I really don't think that I am a stupid person. I used to. Uh, I don't think I'm a stupid person at all. I think I'm quite a smart person and I think I'm probably quite a good problem solver. I noticed that uh, when I was asking people for, you know, information uh, as to what to do with the situation I was in with the deep freeze, you know, the temperatures dropping so dramatically, most of the things they came up with, I already had worked on. And I was really pleased. And you know why I'd worked on them? I'd had an RV in my life and I had camped in the winter in an RV. So I'd sort of done all this on a smaller scale. It just took me a little bit longer to <laughs> to unfreeze the southern side of my house. But, you know, I knew what to do. <laughs> I just you know, needed a bit more time to do it. Um, I, I think it's. Yeah. And, and, and Emma's saying even listening to our inner child when we're happy helps go on the swing, go down that slide. Who cares? You know, my question was. I've got Yvonne and Wade coming for Christmas, but they're not coming until the 15th of January. You know, and I can hear those old voices saying, the decorations must come down by 12th night. Do any of you have that tape running in your head? The Christmas decorations must be put away by 12th night. I think that's January the 5th, right? <coughs> and I'm going, what if I let go of that? <laughs> what if I let go and go, no? Decorations don't go down until after Yvonne has come here for Christmas. And if any of my neighbors have got a problem with that, so be it. Not my problem. Their problem. Not mine. I'm the one paying for the extra you know, electricity on the lights. I'm the one. You know, nobody else. And then the other thing is I've got to wait for good weather before I can take the lights down anyway. <laughs> you know, I, I certainly can't take them down in um, the amount of snow that we've got. Now, the next thing, <laughs> somebody wrote to me and said, I can't believe this. Now, after the snow, we've got a, you know, 10 days of rain coming. So they're going to be flooding. And I'm going, isn't it amazing? Some people can never see the good side of that. I'm going, yay, I won't have to sh shovel the snow anymore. Um, Niasha saying the reason I'm speaking about it is recently my dad asked me why don't I why had I never bought him anything as a daughter 
I somehow felt that was a sad question because I really never did. Huh. That is said, you never bought him a Christmas present or made him one. Uh, I want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. Emma said, yes, the adult Emma wanted to take them down today. My son said, no way, mum. And I kind of had to agree with him. They're shiny and they make everybody happier. Absolutely, Em. And this is like, uh, I've seen some people keep them up all year, you know, and the only people that 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 it affects are the people who are paying the light uh, electricity bill. All right. So I've decided I'm going to keep mine up. Why? I When Yvonne and Wade come to visit, I'd like it to look like Christmas because it is our Christmas day together. You know, it's unfortunately with the snow and everything, it's been delayed, but that's okay. We can do that. And here we go. Remember this comment from last year, you know, tomorrow is the first blank page of a 365 page book. Let's write a good one. Now, I found myself giving in an excuse, you know, after I stood on the scale yesterday and found out that I had put on weight. And then, you know, I was blaming the snow. And then I laughed and I said, if ever there's a lesson I have learned, it is, it's not the snow that made me heavy. <laughs> It, I didn't I didn't lift up the snow and become heavier. What made me heavier was what I was eating. <laughs> so if I want to be lighter, I need to eat differently and or do more exercise. <laughs> you know the excuse of oh well, I would have done more, but it was snowing. Yeah, right doesn't doesn't work with me anymore. Do, have any of you got that same problem, which is the excuses you used to give? You are now so emotionally intelligent that they don't work anymore. Yeah, Emma's saying, yes, the adult Emma wanted to take them down. Yeah, and, but, you know, that's a conditioning, though, isn't it, Emma? We've got all these conditions that by this date they have to come down. Who said that? My parents. Who told them? Their parents. Who told them? Their parents. So... Why did that ever start? All right, so Niasha is saying, and this is really sad to listen to, and just to give you all a warning, but Niasha is saying, uh, it was because he cussed me as a child, uh, and it was for some things beyond my control, right, her illness. He shouldn't have done that. But he said many children do buy their parents gifts, so I should have done it. But in my mind, he traumatized me, so I promised myself that from that tender age to never buy him anything. Um, you know, you are responsible for your behavior, not his. And what are you gaining? Why Are you punishing him the way he punished you? Is that what you want, revenge? That's not pretty. It's not very Christian. But you understand, Niasha, that part of your learning is to understand revenge doesn't fix anything. All right? And I would say it would be a really good time in your life because who knows how long you or your daddy are going to be on this planet to say to yourself, I'm going to start making him little gifts and give them to him. Right? It doesn't matter whether he likes them or not. If that is his issue that I have never given him in a present, then let me make a point of giving him presents this year. Let me make him things. Let me write him a poem, you know, and put it, make a card of it. You know, I would go out of my way to make up for that. And, you know, it doesn't matter that he traumatized you. It is about... What you do will heal you, not him, right? It is for you to heal yourself. Punishing other people does not make you a happy person. Some of us have learned that lesson, Yasha. You know, 
uh, some of us wanted to punish ex-husbands or yeah, parents or you know, parents-in-law or whatever. And some of us have learned it never worked, all right? The only person we punished really was ourselves. New year, new me, same dreams, fresh start. Isn't that nice? So I want you also to remember that I had on my bucket list for so many years that I would love to go to Hawaii and I'd never been. I traveled the world, but I'd never been to Hawaii. And I had that on my bucket list. I never took it off. You know, it was like one day I'm going to make it. And if you remember, Benji picked up on that one year and then phoned me. What was it? Just just around about Christmas time. and said, what are you doing for New Year? Remember that year? And I said, not much. Why, honey? And he said, I am, I'd like to take you to Hawaii. And I went, okay. <laughs> What did I just hear? He said, I'd like to take you to Hawaii. And so don't give up on your dreams. All right. I, you know, that was not something I had ever thought about. And then I was so cheeky because I asked to stay longer than he wanted me to. <laughs> and I said, I might never get back. I'd really like another couple of days. <laughs> but, you know, it's like... um. It's really important to have a bucket list and don't give up on it. Remember, I didn't give up on being able to quit smoking. It just took me a lot longer than I thought it would. Don't give up. I mean, I think about Jody. Jody, how long have you had go to the beach on your bucket list? All right. Um, you know, you know, you're overdue for a visit to the beach. And I, for about as long as I've known you. All right. And if we remember, um, wasn't it Isabel uh, who actually went to the beach and, 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 and sent pictures for you? So, you know, you think about this and go, don't let another year go by. Don't let another year go by. How about this one? In our perfect ways in the ways we are beautiful, in the ways we are human, we are here. Happy New Year. Let's make it ours. Let's make this year happy. So there's my next question to you all. What would make you happy this year? Um, Jody is saying we haven't been to the beach since 2017. Whose fault is that? <laughs> no excuses. You have not made that important enough to do it. So your choice. All right. But, you know, if you we always do the things we want to do. All right. Now, I know you can say we didn't have transport, but I know that you get use of a car pretty often. Uh, how far are you away from the beach? About an hour? Why not take a drive there and see it in winter? <laughs> you know? Um, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, yes, it would be lovely to walk with your feet in the sand, but wouldn't it be nice just to go see the beach? Yes, Emma. So true. Emma is saying, what would make me happy is to stop self-destructive behaviors, to learn how to love myself. Yeah, Emma. I want to tell you, I had so many self-destructive behaviors. I still have a few, eating being one of them. Um, I, I want to tell you that I have had so many in my lifetime, and yet I have done a pretty good job now of working on them. If you remember last year, I was busy training to do the five-kilometer run this time last year. How come I'm not doing that this year? I notice I'm not, and I don't seem to have the will to do it either. But that is my choice, right? So that's a self-destructive behavior. If I'm going to eat, then let me exercise. 
you know, you can do everything in moderation, right? But I cannot keep eating and not exercising and expect to continue to lose weight. No, it doesn't work that way. Uh, you know, that, that's that's a kid's dream. It's not a reality. All right, how about this one? I thought this was good. An optimist stays up until midnight to see the new year in. And a pessimist stays up to make sure that the old year leaves. Interesting. I am just so grateful this year to be alive. I have to tell you, I, I say that every day. Emma's saying, I say this with my face stuck in a bucket of Quality Street. Now, those of you who don't know, Quality Street <laughs> is an English tradition of uh, toffees that will pull your teeth out and chocolates, some of which are just too great. Do you like the soft ones or the hard ones, Emma? Um, you know, but that's Christmas. And that's something, Emma, that's something that Jody taught me. You are allowed to live. Christmas is about, you know, eating the wrong foods and enjoying it. All right. And then let's start again. So try not to beat up on yourself. Just say, this is, I'm allowed to do this at Christmas time. I will pay the price. I was doing so well. I had only put on a couple of pounds. And then I don't know what happened to me. I, I found a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah, Emma's saying, who needs teeth? Um, now, did I need to be playing making these yesterday? No. Of course not, because I knew the chances were that they would never make it out of my house. That's my problem. I bake them up and then I eat them. So, you know, it's just like... <laughs> I bake them thinking I'm going to take them to other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't happen. <laughs> the other thing I noticed was I was not looking after myself as well in this deep freeze. Can any of you relate to that? You know, I, I was scared to even have a shower. What what if, you know, what if that blows up my, my, my water heater? You know, things like that. And then I went, really, so this is getting stupid. You know, get in the shower. Um, <laughs> and I did. You know, and the day that I, you know, I, it was like I, the, I think I did that on the Wednesday evening. I got in the shower. And once I got the water starting to run, I quickly got in the shower. I did a wash of clothes and I ran the dishwasher all that same evening to make sure that if anything happened the next day, I at least knew I could cope for another couple of days. And then last night I just went back. I know I need to get back in the shower again. <laughs> but it is funny, isn't it? How um, how many of you can tell your mental health by the state of your um, house? You know, I find the more untidy my house is, the less under control I am. I bit some nails off this week. You know, really. Um, why? I was stressed. My house was freezing. <laughs> Literally. But I thank, really have to thank you, and particularly Jody, for teaching me things like, you know, this too shall pass, right? Um, um, I don't know how big that box of uh, bucket of Quality Street is. Is it sort of this big, or is it, yeah, this big, or is it just the smaller one? Um, I know that Yvonne will not thank me necessarily uh, for the fact that there are licorice all sorts in her gift bag and in Wade's. Now, the reason I give them to them both is they both like different sorts. So when they swap them over, they will both end up with a bag full. Um, but, you know, there's part of me that goes, she's not going to thank me for that because it's pure sugar. But on the other hand, they're her favorites. And I, you know, why would I not give her her favorite candy? <laughs> it's just like, that's what I do. I was thinking about my friend who lost her husband at Christmas last year. Can you imagine what it's going to be like every Christmas now? Uh, that will be her memory of Christmas. So we are so grateful, really, for so much. 
Yeah, I think, you know, Emma, that you have grown so much in the time that I've known you. And, you know, I think there are times when you might want to give yourself credit on how far you've come. And I want to ask you, Emma, what difference has having Eve, I think Eve is the name of your doggy, right? Um, what difference has having her in your life made to you? Have you laughed more? Have you been in awe of her you know, growing up and, and learning how to do things, watching her you know, learn how to bark, watching her in her first snowfall? Have you, have you had great joy from having um, Eve join your family? I would imagine so. And how has Luke changed uh, in the year, not yeah, it is Luke, right? The son, is he Luke? Luke? <laughs> um, you know, how how much has he changed for having a pet in his life? I, I would say to all the pet owners, um, there there is something about owning a pet that is quite, you know, you you don't realize it until you have one, right? I, I know one of the things that I have to consider is whether or not to get a pet. And I realize that I've, you know, I live in a situation where um, my neighbor complains about absolutely everything. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have a pet that I have to get rid of because it barks or does whatever that she will not like. Why would I do that to a pet? And yes, in a way, that means she's controlling my life, but I choose not to have that happen. So, John Burroughs said this, and I like it. It says, one resolution I have made and try to always keep is to rise above the little things. You know, when I was busy going... The south end of my house is frozen. I kept thinking about the people who were homeless, where their total body was probably freezing. You know, I was thinking about how lucky I was to have heat <laughs> in, the south, in the north end of my house. Um, how lucky I was to be able to pump up the heat because I had the room in my uh electricity account to be able to do it um so you know you look at it and you say to yourself be grateful emma's saying you know some of the things that happen because of the getting the puppy and you know i'm not going to put it out for public m but here's the thing she was saying it made a huge difference to her life takes her out she makes my world a little bigger. Yes. And I'm certain that she makes you laugh. And you didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, Jeannie's saying if you have a pet, you have to think. You would have that animal for over 10 years or so. Yes, I, I know when I got uh, Bean Bean, uh, I s made sure that I spoke to Yvonne and Wade and said to them, if anything happened to me, would they take on Bean Bean? I didn't want to adopt a dog and then not have it, you know, have it end up back in kennels again, in, in the pound again, especially a German Shepherd, right? A black German Shepherd. You know, the black dogs stay in the pound longer than any others and German Shepherds stay in longest of all, obviously. Uh, I would actually, I don't know that it's German Shepherds, but I would think Rottweilers, any of those big black, uh, what I call attack dogs, are ones that stay in there a long time. Yeah, Emma's saying German Shepherds have a very big funny bone. I agree. I, I, I always found that. Well, thank you, Mary. I wish you a very happy new year as well. <laughs> and yeah, Emma's letting me know that uh, Luke Luke is her son's name, but it's not his last name. <laughs> she may be daft, but not that daft. 
<laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> well, I want to tell you that our life is happier for seeing your name pop up today. I, I have to say that, Emma, on behalf of us all. Yeah, um, Emma's saying, I don't understand why black dogs stay. They are insanely beautiful. Maybe somebody can explain that one. I believe that people think they look more vicious. You know, a little white fluffy thing doesn't look vicious. And funny enough, uh, the small dogs are more vicious than big dogs. Do you, you know that? But there's a reason they call them ankle biters, right? <laughs> And if you think about it, how many of you have watched a chihuahua, you know, attack dog? The, you know, those small dogs are, uh, are a lot more controlling than the big ones. I found that the big dogs, they most of them just want to please you. They just need to know how to. So here we are. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, are any of you going out for New Year? Uh, as I said, I'm going across to my neighbor and we will have, a, I'm sure, a wonderful dinner and a lot of laughs because we're going to do a Pictionary. We did a little bit of charades, or charades depending which country you're in, um, with them uh, on Christmas. So, you know, we, we know that it's going to be pretty challenging and competitive. <laughs> They're a competitive bunch, those people. Right. Yeah, Emma's saying, making a good point, right? She's saying, ah, yes, the little ankle biters, they get away with so much more. Can you imagine mine behaving like that? Yes. And, you know, if yours, if, uh, if Eve behaved like that, people would demanding be demanding that you put them down. And yet when a, a, an ankle biter does it, uh, oh, poor little thing. Yeah. It's scared. Well, yeah. And the big dogs get scared, too. So it is unfortunate, um, but life isn't fair, right? We learned that lesson a long time ago. On Sunday, just so you know, on Sunday, what I want to do is um, a broadcast about the favorite hacks that we've done over the last couple of years. So if you've seen a hack that I've given you and you go, that has made my life a lot easier, let me know. Uh, so we can include it. But I just wanted to include some because I realize that we come up with an awful lot of them. And some of them have changed my life dramatically and maybe yours as well. I know Jody sent me a, a short list of hers. And so if you, you know, went, I've been using that ever since you talked about it. Um, let me know because it's important. I've, I forgot to um, add a couple now that I think about it. Jody, can you remind me to add in Swiffer Dusters? Um, because that really has to be one of the big ones. <laughs> you know, like, how did I never realize that before? Um, and I'm hoping that all of you have a fun evening and that you're safe. If you are going out, I hope it's outside uh, if possible. Um, but you know, on the other hand, if it's inside, uh, is it within your pod? Uh, you know, we've, I know I've got this pod uh, of people that I've allowed myself to mingle with. Now, does it mean that they cannot give me Omnicron? No, but it means they are a lot more careful than a lot of people. I will be the only one not boosted. So I'm the one at risk. And Jeannie says, we stay home to be safe. Yes, that you know, that's the only, really the only place I go. I have my groceries delivered to me. I have my, uh, a lot of my shopping delivered to me. I don't want to be near those places with a lot of people that don't care and are not vaccinated and don't choose to be. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Organization. Emma's saying it's not a hack. It's a lifestyle. And Sal has it down to a T from what I've seen. I could learn a lot there. Yes. And I, you know, it's, I actually, I constantly have to remind myself to let you know what I'm up to um, because I will be doing things and I'll go, have I ever talked to the, the, the group about the fact that I do that? You know, like that simple thing, right? With my tea towels. You know, putting uh, 
um, that you know that rubberized shelf lining stuff, so that they don't keep falling off. It's like, why didn't I think of that before? Wow, that's interesting. Uh, Emma's saying all of your baking equipment in little compartments and boxes. Meanwhile, mine fall out when I open the cupboard door. Yeah, actually, <laughs> that's a good one. This was a Halloween treat, but what I've got in here is cinnamon, cinnamon sticks, uh, psyllium husks, pink salt, ginger, icing sugar, and cinnamon sugar, all contained in that box, all right? Now, I probably would have painted this and labeled it nicely, but in the meantime, that's how it's staying. So we will talk about... You know, it's to me, uh, those sort of things. Jody, can you add in buying in bulk? Uh, I really want to talk about that as well, uh, how, how much we have saved. Did you guys hear about what Jody found? She found that there was a new store opening up uh, in her area. And, you know, it was like a Costco type thing. But um, normally the annual fee was 50 something dollars. But if she bought it when they opened, it was only 25. Um, it was just, you know, and it's just like she reckons she's already paid for it time, you know, a few times over with the savings that she's got. Labels, yes, label things, right? The other thing is, Jody, yeah, can you put labels on my list as well? Because that's a good point. I do. <laughs> And I label things in my freezer as well. Uh, by the way, uh, one of the things I, uh, Jody, let's talk freezers as well on Sunday. All right. I'm going to get out of here um, and say to you that this is my joy to have been able to talk to you all year, you know, and talk with you and learn from you and cry with you, and laugh with you, and be with you just one way and another. I think it is incredible um, what we have learned. And I would like to say that, you know, when that panic hit me a week ago, <laughs> I just, you know, part of me just burst out laughing and went, oh, this is interesting learning for us all. You know, and I kept laughing because I'm going, there are so many of my viewers that think that, you know, <laughs> one foot of snow is just starting snowing. Uh, the thing that really made me burst out laughing, because, you know, I like to do that when I'm in that sort of space, was that I was reading somewhere that in Turkey somewhere, they had over four meters of snow. That would be 3.3. .3. Hang on a second. It says 12 uh, yeah, they had about 14 foot of snow. <laughs> Imagine that. 14 foot. That is a story high of your house. All right. Uh, most of you got eight foot ceilings. Yeah, it's like a, a one and a half stories high. Can you imagine waking up to that? <laughs> Can you imagine that you'd forgotten to order milk that week or or whatever, you know, and there's no way you're going to get it. So uh, Jeannie saying, so glad to have been with you for 2021. So grateful for you and the family. Well, we, I want to tell you, we as a family of people getting together, I think are all grateful for each other. We've made it through another year and some of us made it through some pretty tough times this year and some of us will continue to have some pretty tough times but the good news is it's amazing what we can get through together isn't it and amazing what we can get through when we have the right affirmations when we have the right things to say to that negative voice in our head and when we realize perhaps the greatest learning of all 
that our feelings are our feelings. I think that was a big lesson for me this year as well, which is if I'm feeling it, I have control. Feelings are within my control. Things happening to me are not, but my feelings are within my control. I don't know why that took me so long to get that one right. But now that I know it, I am amazed how I don't tolerate it as much from other people. Now. You know, they'll say, I'm feeling really sad. And I'll just go, what are you doing about it? I'm feeling really lonely, really. What are you doing about it? Because if you're feeling it, that's within your control. People don't like that, but it is true. And that has made me a happier person this year. I didn't dwell on stuff, on the feelings, right? I just went, okay, what do you want to do about it? And, you know, M, if I were halfway through a box of Quality Street, I'd be saying absolutely nothing until I finished the box. <laughs> that is my choice. And one of the things I will always feel grateful for is I have the choice. This is dear Mama Sal saying, thank you so much for being here with me. We'll see you on Sunday. There is no broadcast tonight. It is New Year's Eve. Enjoy it. And we'll see you on Sunday. And thank you, Jody, for all your help as usual. And all of you for being here. Bye-bye for now.